Vocal effects plugins are my most favorite types of plugins, bar none, and I've been working with them for a very long time. And so when Bliss contacted me about voices, I was ecstatic. And it turns out that Bliss Voices is amazing. It's an amazing harmonizer. However, this time around, instead of just relying on my own passable singing, Look up, can you see the stars? I have found a way to become them all. Can you see the stars? I have found a way to become them all. Don't make me fall. Don't make me fall. And let me add that my singing is made passable thanks to the built-in autotune and also the harmonizing nature of the plugin. Well, in this case, I didn't want to rely on my own shitty singing voice. I actually wanted to bring in someone with a good singing voice. She's got a great singing voice, as you can hear. She's very, very talented, extremely creative. <laughs> and she learns new things very quickly. You see, before I contacted her, she had never ever used a vocal plugin of this type before. But more about that later on, and I think it's time you meet her. Hello, I am Rushi. Barush is my real name, but I have two alter egos. You can also know me as Barush Mima. I am a music producer and songwriter. This is what I like doing the most but I also need to work. So I work as a lecturer and uh, I connect my experience from my artist work with my, as my friend calls it, money work. <laughs> and I try to introduce the creative technology to people in the area of education. <laughs> workshops uh, for teachers and for the kids. I make uh, some activities, mostly with Koala Sampler and also online, free online apps, which are accessible for the kids and teachers. But I always connect it with the physical things like, hey, we are going to make some experiments with sound or visual experiments and stuff. And uh, then we will connect it with the work in the apps. Yeah, we're gonna learn more about Rouge and what she does, so just keep watching. But first, what I want to do is to do a quick overview of Bliss Voices. <laughs> Okay, so Bliss Voices is basically like an auto-tuner, a pitch shifter, a voice pitch follower, and a harmonizer all in one. You've got a bunch of controls in here and many modes to work with. As you can see, we've got four voice slots in here, one, two, three, and four, and all of them have note control, formant, volume, stereo, filter, and delay. You also have two modes. You got transpose, which will follow your pitch no matter if you're going up or down and no matter how you're actually pitching these things, it still follows your pitch. However, if you go into flatten mode, it will flatten out the pitch and it basically starts sounding like a vocoder and I absolutely love this. Now, together with all of the other controls, let's increase the panning over here to get some stereo separation. And then we can change the format like this. We can also create a delayed space like this and have a delayed reaction of all the voices. 
Now, what's so sweet about this plugin too is that on top of all of this, we have a multitude of ways of modulating the controls in here. It starts over here with the performance page that allows us to set up MPE controls for controlling various things inside Bliss Voices. So we've got modulation wheel, keyboard controls, note on and off commands, slide pressure, and dispatch. One thing I like doing is using the modulation wheel to control the formants in voices. So I'm going to set it up for formant voice one and voice two here. I'm going to increase them to 100%. And we can also control the scaling of how this modulation happens as soon as we start sliding the modulation wheel. And if I go into the voices page here, we can see that on voice one and two, it actually moves. And if we listen to it, we can hear the change happen as I pull on this wheel. Now, apart from everything we have inside the performance page, we also have a sequencer over here to the right with two destinations where we can set up various things. And we also have a modulation page with two LFOs and an envelope follower. Now, the envelope follower, it reads the volume input of my vocals, and then it creates a control signal out of it. So we can, for instance, set it up to control the filter for voice one and filter for voice uh, two here, right there. And let's make it go the other way like that. And if we go back into voices, we can see the filter jumping. The louder I talk, the more filtered it gets. We also have a MIDI page in here, and this will set up the behavior for the MIDI notes that you're playing. So you got an arpeggiator, you got a voices page, and you also have an envelope. Now, if you've got sensitive ears, you might have noticed that my vocals sound a little bit different whenever I'm doing these tutorial bits with Bliss Voices. And that is because I am pre-processing my vocals slightly different than I would be doing if I was doing just regular narration. And I do that because I want the best result I can get out of my vocal plugin. These are very moody, very sensitive plugins, and there are certain things you want to keep in check if you want to get the best result out of them. And I'll show you exactly how I go about doing that with some pre-processing. But first, I was very curious to hear how Roosh... What, what the f*** am I watching? What is going on in this one? It's a song about blueberry stains. What I was going to say was, I was very curious about how Roosh even discovered mobile music making in the first place. I wanted to introduce the creative technology to the education. So I was trying to find some applications on my phone and on the computer to be able to create something with them, not only the visual art, but also music. And I know that I tried some, uh, some looper for Android, but it wasn't too good. And then I found, I think it was an advertisement on Instagram for Koala Sampler. And as soon as I saw it, I wanted that. So I got it and I started using it for my music performances for the kids because I write uh, songs for the kids, very silly and easy <laughs> and simple songs. Uh, for example, you know, I was singing a song about a frog and I asked the kids to make the frog sounds and I sequenced it on the stage and we were singing the song about the frogs like that, thanks to Koala. <laughs> And then I, uh, I got sick last year and I discovered Koala Sampler Facebook group and I saw that people were doing interesting things in Koala. So as I was sick, I started watching some tutorials on it and started experimenting and I created a uh, six minute long track with only the sounds of my mouth and my voice uh, laying in the bed. And you know, my brain just exploded because you know, I had always many uh, melodies and compositions in my head and I've been dreaming about making electronic music or 
music uh, in general. But it all seemed so inaccessible for me because it was so freaking expensive. You know, when I was trying to uh, to search for some, you know, for example, loopers or something like that online, I thought like, oh my goodness, it's so expensive. Okay, uh, it's not something for me. And then I found Koala and it helped me. And I got into the Koala Creative community. We were called the Koala Beatcast community, but now we changed the name. They introduced me to iOS music production and AUM and all these things. Right now, you are listening to my vocals completely unprocessed, just running in straight through a microphone into AUM. But it's going to sound very different in a little while because we're going to add some pre processing because when you are working with vocal plugins such as vocoders, voice doublers, pitch shifters and also harmonizers, what you need to know is that these effects are very sensitive to shifts in dynamics and frequency information. And so by applying pre-processing we can keep those things in check. And what I do is I always use four tools for this. I start with a high pass filter and then I move on to removing background noise. And then I move on to handling transients such as S's and T's. And after that, I handle dynamics with the compressor. So at the top here, I'm using just a regular high pass filter. It's set to 100 Hertz. So it's cutting out frequencies from 100 Hertz and down. After that, we add something for removing background noise. Now on iOS, there is a plugin called Bruce Free. It's made by a Swedish company called Klevgren Produkter, situated here in Stockholm, where I live. And it is the best one on the App Store. So the way you use it is you shut up um, and then you hit this button and you hold it for a few seconds. And there, my vocals should be more clean now, and we can no longer hear the fan in my bedroom. So now that that's taken care of, we can move on to handling the transients. And I'm doing that with another plugin called Espresso. This one is from the same company that makes Bruce Free. So I've already set it to a range around slightly under 4,000 Hertz and up to about 7,000 Hertz. I've got a little compressor going on down here that I can increase or decrease like this. But to actually get this to start working, we need to increase the sensitivity of it. So if I increase it a lot, you can hear that my S's get less pronounced. I'm gonna pull this down, it's too much. So around here, I think. And what I'm gonna do next is to show you what's actually being removed by pressing this button here. And you can hear that it does a great job of actually handling transients. So now that that's taken care of, we can now move on to handling the dynamics. And to do that, we need a compressor, Rough Rider 3 from Audio Damage. It's a fully featured free AUV3 compressor plugin. And this thing even offers external sidechain input. I'm going to begin by increasing the ratio here. I don't want it to be too high because I don't want to over compress my sound. But I am going to pull down the sensitivity too much so you can hear what happens when you overdo it with a compressor. I'm going to pull it back to around 25 dBs, 24. Yeah, that, that works. And if I increase my loudness, you can see it's working harder. And if I decrease my loudness, you can see that the compressor is working less. And if we think that it's compressing too much and we're losing too much volume, well, then we can always make it up by pulling this up. Pulling it up to decibels, I think this sounds good. And what we have now is a pretty clean audio stream with the dynamics in check. We removed low frequency information and we're also handling transients. A way cleaner audio stream for the vocal plugin to work with. Earlier in this video, I did mention that before I met Rushi, she had never ever worked with vocal effect plugins. No vocoders, no pitch shifters, and no harmonizers. So this was going to be something completely new to her. So to me, it was kind of interesting to see how she would actually deal with it. Well, it turns out that she is a very quick learner. <laughs> Oh, 
křesťané, rozvážujme. Sobě v dělení je Páně, i jiná mnoha dobrodiní. Now, the interview I did with Rushi was done a few days after she had gotten access to the Bliss Voices test flight. And so I, of course, asked her what it was like working with a new tool. And this is what she said. It's pretty interesting that your creativity is depending on the instruments that you have. And the more you know the apps and uh, the possibilities, the more you realize what you could actually do. Or you also learn how to listen to music of other people because you start noticing some things and you start wanting the things that they are creating. For example, I really like listening to Moderat. They inspire me a lot because they have a singer and uh, I listen to what they do. And for example, it happened to me maybe a week ago that I wanted to do something like a freezing a delay. And I created it in, in my head and then I heard them doing exactly the same thing. And I want to find a plugin that would allow me to do that easily. I think that when you start thinking this way, you start coming up with new ideas. Now, I really like experimenting with droney like sounds, monk drone sounds, and it's so easy to make them with something like Bliss Voices because you can pitch your voice. So all we have to do is to turn on one voice and just pitch it all the way down. Next, what I've done is I've set up controls so that I can use the slide on the keyboard to control the formats of the voices, giving you control over the character of your sound. I admit, the sound I made wasn't very drony. I think you're gonna have to sing for longer than that to actually make a vocal drone. But there are so many ways of actually producing sounds like this and experimenting with these types of sounds. And Rushi definitely did. And I discovered something in a few clips of hers that I didn't even know she could do. But it turns out that Rushi can overtone sing. <laughs> It's the first time I actually hear someone do overtone singing through a harmonizer. And it sounds pretty dope. And I know it's not something most of us can do. Roche is obviously very talented and she's been training for a long time. However, never be afraid of experimenting. Now, something that I have struggled with for quite some time and am still struggling with is finding a good workflow, knowing exactly what apps to use for what thing. And even though I have so much knowledge, even though I have done this for 10 plus years, well, I still struggle with it. And I know that a lot of you, my viewers, also struggle with the same thing. And so I thought it would be interesting to hear, you know, kind of a fresh perspective from someone who hasn't actually been doing this for as long as we have. So what I asked Rusha was, have you been able to find a good workflow? It took me a while to figure out, but for now it's definitely AUM. 
where I use Koala as my default audio source, mostly for percussions. And uh, if I make in the flip challenge for Koala creative community things, uh, I also use it for uh, chopping the sample and, and resampling and, and stuff. And then I really like combining it with Loopy, but I developed my specific way of using it because I use multiple instances and I always put, uh, for example, one to four loops per channel. <laughs> Most of the time I freestyle, so I also have always at least one or sometimes even more uh, channels for just free singing without any uh, application that I would record my sound in. And then I use some synthesizers with drumbo, drumbo loops, and I think that's it. <laughs> I just combine these things and, and then I really like experimenting with all the PEX plugins. Most of the time I do live things, so I chose to use Tune Boosters apps for mixing. I always use compression and uh, an equalizer and yeah, the -er, the basic things. And I really like delays and reverbs. I couldn't live without other desert cities. <laughs> you know, I couldn't live without that. I also like the Bliss apps a lot. For example, I really like using the Dragonfly plugin. It's so cool when you sing and you, you move that knob and it, it makes like, uh, 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 you know, I love it. But I'm not this kind of person who collects applications because I always have a hard time to learn with a new one. <laughs> so I always try to find new ways how to use what I already have. One technique I like doing is using the flatten mode inside Bliss Voices because with that I can create a non-changing chord and then on top of it I can add my clean voice to add harmonics also together with played MIDI voices on the keyboard inside Bliss Voices. I've turned on voice 1 and 2 and turned them over to flatten mode and I've also set the note in voice 1 to C4 and the note in voice 2 to E4. And this creates a chord that is always there no matter what I do. And then I can add harmonics on top of it, which is so sweet. I don't want to pee pee in my bed. Oh no, so please don't make me pee pee in. And now something more serious. I have high functioning autism and ADHD on top of that. It can be really hard to learn new things, especially when you're doing it by yourself. But in Rushi's case, she didn't have to. And uh, she had a lot to say about that. I would definitely not be doing this without people in the community because they invited me to the group and they encouraged me and I would never do it because I wouldn't trust myself enough. I also needed help from living people, not only YouTube videos, because I was a complete beginner. So I'm very grateful <laughs> for them. You mentioned something about a Beatcast community. Uh, could you tell us more about it? Um, it's Koala creative community and uh, it's basically people who like Koala and create music in Koala but most of them are mobile music producers and uh, that was the great place for people who would like to learn how to do music on the iPad or phone. There is many many people who are really good at it and are willing to help every time. The most important thing is that we create together and uh, we have a show every week. We make koala flip challenges and also other challenges or meetups. And uh, now we started making breakdowns of our, you know, of our setups or uh, live sets. We really like exploring uh, the creativity and uh, how you can collaborate and create together, even though you are from all around the world. 
Now, there were a few names in particular that Rushi really wanted to shout out because she talked about them a lot. Obviously, these guys have been helping her and she just wanted to share some love. Setting up in Logic, create a new project and a tracks project. And then we're gonna add an audio track for our microphone input. Now here, I'm gonna press this little icon here to open up the track controls. And I'm gonna go up here. Here we have our inputs and outputs. We're gonna head into inputs and make sure that we've selected this to be a mono channel because we only need one channel for our microphone. Now, I always have my microphone connected to channel eight on my multi-channel interface. So when we go in here, I need to select channel eight, but you select whatever channel you have your microphone connected to. If I arm this, we can hear that my microphone is coming in here. Next, we need to add a MIDI track. So I'm gonna press this plus sign here and I'm gonna add a MIDI track. I'm gonna go into the plugin view and you might have a plugin loaded. In that case, you just long press on the plugin tile and select replace. In my case, I don't have anything loaded. So I'm just gonna press an instrument here and we can either go down to MIDI controlled effects where the Bliss Voices plugin is, or we could do it the simple way by searching for it. So we press in search and type voices. There we go. Select that. Double tap Bliss Voices. And now what we need to do is to use side chaining to send the audio from Audio Track 1 into Bliss Voices. So we go to the side chain menu here. We enter audio and select track 1. And now if I arm this, microphone is coming in clear and it's going into Bliss Voices. But in Logic, in order to hear anything from the harmonizers or vocoders you're using, you need to have the transport playing. Hello, you. What are you doing here? Get out of my house before I call the cops. All right, so setting up in AM. Over here, I've got a channel with my narration recording, so we can ignore this, but we're gonna focus on this channel right here. First, we're gonna select my microphone. We're gonna go to the input slot and go to hardware inputs, and I have my microphone on input eight. You select whatever input you need to select. And there we go, my microphone is selected. Next, we need to go into the effect slot and select Bliss Voices. And it's very easy in AM. You just pull this down, you press up here, we type voice, and there it is, Bliss Voices. Now it's loaded and we can open this up and start playing it. If we double tap in the bar here, we can maximize it and we can play and we can harmonize the microphone instantly. But if we wanted to, let's say, sequence this thing with something like Fugue Machine, then we could add another channel. So I'm gonna add a MIDI channel here, open up this slot, and we can go either to audio unit extensions or processors, and I'm gonna go into processors. I'm gonna select Fugue Machine, and there we have Fugue Machine. Now what I'm gonna do is go in here and just choose one of my fugues that I've saved, and then what we need to do is to make sure that the notes from Fugue Machine are going into Bliss Voices. So we can either do it from routing it from this menu up here, or we can just do it from this menu over here. And here we have the outputs from Fugue. I'm gonna select to send all of the outputs from Fugue Machine into Bliss Voices. And now if I press play, we can hear that it is getting uh, harmonized at the chords that I've got inside Fugue Machine, which is so very sweet. I absolutely love working like this. All right, so setting up in Cubasis, it's very different from setting up in AUM or Logic. So ah, this is so confusing. I wish they all did it the same way. Either way, we're gonna create a new track and I'm gonna call it Voicey, yeah. Now, whenever you create a new track in Cubasis, you get two tracks instantly. You get an audio track and a MIDI track with a piano on it. The first thing I always do is go to the MIDI track, I press on the piano, and then I go back out of here and select no instrument. Right, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go to the audio track and go into insert effects. And here is where we're gonna load Bliss Voices, going into audio units, going down to Bliss, and then Bliss Voices and select that. Next, what I need to do is to make sure that my microphone is coming in through this channel. And so we go to routing and here it's already selected as a mono input, but we can easily switch that from stereo to mono if we need to. And then I need to go in here and select the channel. Now I always have my microphone on eight, so I'm gonna select that and you select whatever you need to select. Next, what we need to do is to route the MIDI coming from the MIDI channel 
in Tubeless Voices. And we do that with this button here. So if we press this, we get a list and it asks us what MIDI channel we want to route the signal from. And we only have one, but if we had multiple, it would be the one that we wanted to use to sequence our notes in Tubeless Voices. So I'm going to select this channel and now MIDI notes can be sent in Tubeless Voices. So if we press this here, arm both channels here for recording and record a little bit. Hello you, are you still here? I've already called the cops. It was so much fun talking to Rushi. However, there's this one thing I just can't wrap my head around because, well, I asked her to tell me a little bit more about the koala people. And this is what she said. There is a tree you can watch from our kitchen and every single year they make a nest on it and we can observe uh, their life. You know, um, they always sleep around the chimneys. Now, I don't know what to make of that, but for those of you who don't understand that this bit here was a joke, well, it is a joke. She never said anything about the koala people, even remotely close to what I just displayed here. It's just me putting some random words together, grabbed from a discussion me and her had, and I, I realized that that also creates a lot of weird questions, which I don't have time to answer. I want to round this video off by saying that anything I haven't talked about in this video regarding Bliss Voices, you can probably figure out for yourself. With that said, I want to say thank you to Rushi who did the interview. And for those of you who want to check out her and her music and also the Koala Creative Community, I've put all necessary links down in a pinned comment and also in the description. You can also, of course, find a link to Bliss Voices. And if you are a singer, if you're a vocalist and you need a new plugin to spice up your performances and or your productions, then you should definitely have a look at Bliss Voices. I've tried all of the harmonizers on iOS and there's nothing quite like Bliss Voices. And this one is the only one that offers auto-tuning, harmonizing, in-depth modulation, together with an arpeggio mode, MPE, and it's all wrapped up in an AUV3 plugin. Plugin. Pretty insane. If you want to support the work I do here in the channel, then give me a thumbs up. And if you don't want to support the work I do here in the channel, then give me a thumbs up. I want to thank you so much for watching. And as usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it.